Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about tent stoves. Welcome back to the channel guys. Like I said, we're going to be talking about tent stoves today. I've got seven different designs here. A um, couple of different varieties as well of uh, tent stove. We've got the folding, lightweight backpacking ones and the more heavyweight kind of car camping type affairs. Um, this won't be in depth about every single one, but it'll be an overview and a bit of a comparison for you. Well, here we have our first category. These are the heavyweight um, car camping, bell tent, um, workshop, whatever you want to use them for, type um, wood stove. Uh, I've not got the chimneys on any of these today, just for ease. Um, inside these is where you find your chimneys and they just slot into each other and usually have a spark arrestor on top. They will also have the dampener on the bottom section as well. Same with this one here. Another staple of these sort of stoves is you get these that open as a port on top for cooking. Um, generally you get enough heat just through the metal but you know if you want that little bit more flamage or you want to do some marshmallows you can open that up. Now on the left here we have the Winnerwell Woodlander. This is called the double view because it has these windows on either side as well as the one on the front there. Now some of these stoves are going to look a bit black on the windows, that's because the fire last time I used them burnt down and um, it sooted up a little. When it's hot in there it tends to burn that soot off, otherwise you can just use some water and ash and just give it a wipe over. On the other side here we've got an Outbacker wood burning stove. Um, you may also recognise this as a Frontier stove, maybe other brands as well. I don't know why everyone uses the same design. Um, Maybe it's kind of a license-free old Victorian design or something, I don't know. Um, but this one is very much an entry-level one. It was the first one I bought, um, and you'll see a lot of these about. Now, compared to the other stoves we're going to be looking at, these are both very thick steel. This is stainless steel. This one, uh, as far as I'm aware, is just blued steel. Blue being a treatment like you do on gun barrels rather than kind of painting them, um, meaning they can rust a little bit these ones but you can give them a rub down and you can even spray them or re-blue them. Now like I said this one is a lot cheaper than this one and most on the market I think it's pretty much the cheapest one you can buy. Um, what are the differences? Well this one, the winner well, comes with a grate. You have the windows, ceramic glass, heat proof glass on all sides which is fantastic. You've got these lovely fold out racks. You do have kind of handles but not so much racks on the Outbacker. You have these sprung locking legs, very handy. On this one you have the pin, so a little more effort to set up. You do get a nice fire grate with the Winnerwell one as well, slots right in. You got them running down so you can easily scrape along them. Both of them come with their own kind of canvas bags which is handy. They both do the exact same job. Um, they're both about the same weight, um, 10 kilograms or a hair under. I find, in all honesty, this is a bit easier to have a fire in. 
Um, I don't have a grate in here and um, you could make one. Uh, your port, your opening, is quite small compared to the squared edge of this one. Um, but you could get a small one in there. What I tend to do is lay small bits of wood across so I could have bigger ones along so you can get a bit more airflow in there. Now you do get a pokey stick with the Winnerwell one and you've got this kind of lip on the end here or lack of a lip should I say so you can scrape that ash right out even while the fire's going because it's underneath that grate. So there's just a bit more attention to detail there. You've also got nice embellishments kind of like the handles which are also very practical because they disperse heat. Got a nice vent on this one, obviously you just leave the door open a little bit. And of course the atmosphere you get with this inside a tent, shelter, cabin, whatever, is lovely. Another thing with the winter well, all of this comes apart, all the glass comes out, door comes off very easily for cleaning or for maintenance. Um, you've also got a lot of accessories for the winter well. You've probably all seen me use the ovens, the water tank and stuff like that. I've seen a water tank for these, um, Frontier one, but if, I don't know what else they have. Um, accessories tend to be interchangeable a lot of the time, um, but like the stove pipe oven on this wouldn't be, for example. So that's a look at my two heavier weight stoves. I'll uh, now get out the next lot. Right, next up we've got folding stoves. So these are portable, lightweight because they're all titanium, um, except they actually fold apart, kind of like um, fireboxes, bush boxes, um, which all of these can be used as as well. They can be used as a fire pit, um, and some of them come with a grill like the Pomoli one. So starting from this side, we've got the Fast Fold by Winnerwell. We've got the Pomoli T1, and on the end is the new Pomoli Woods Night. So this, I believe, is a special edition. It's not something they're going to carry on making, as far as I'm aware. Um, so if you see that and fall in love with it straight away, um, you know where to look. Now you'll notice in all of these, they are empty because they fold flat. You've seen me unpack them just now. They come with these titanium sheet chimneys. Now I'll put in some footage of me kind of rolling one out. Um, they come rolled like this, so rolled the long way, so it's nice and short to pack away. And the first time you do them, you have to form them. Um, it's best to use a form, but you roll it out, good with two people and wear gloves, and then you roll them around your form, um, put on your rings, put them on the stove, and then give it a burn. That kind of sets the shape, so it will roll into this shape and the long chimney shape. Um, so, yeah, very packable, a bit fiddly, especially if you're not on flat, you know, perfect ground, um, but it allows these to be packable and flat and small, otherwise they'd be the same size as the big ones. So, you know, it's not ideal. When I first saw these, you kind of see that um, overlap and you're sure that smoke's going to leak out of it, but it really doesn't. You've got that, that flue system going, sucking, drawing that smoke up and um, I think it does get a good overlap as well. Um, same for all of these, they're pretty much identical in that regard. Very clever, a little bit fiddly. So the T1 Pomoli and the Woods Knight at the end there are both 3.9 kilos. If I say anything wrong, I'll correct it on the screen, which is 8.6 pounds. So, you know, significantly lighter than a 10 kilogram stove and more packable because it goes flat. The winner well here, the fast fold, that's uh, 2 kilograms, 4.4 pounds, so even lighter, probably because my next point. Like I said, all of these are titanium. Um, this one has this grate or vent on the front here, so you get to see the flames a little bit. Um, I'll move that over. The T1 here, you've got the ceramic glass on the front and on the side. Um, this is on one side. I think you can buy the sides on their own, so you can kind of play around with that. So yes, it makes it a little heavier, but it really is nice. Um, as you know, winter nights are long. You spend a lot of time in your tent <laughs> cooking on these and everything, and being able to see that fire, see it light up the inside of your tent is really nice. Now on the end here, the, um, what did I call it? The Woods Night. 
Um, as you can see, it's pretty much the same as the T1, except you've got this design on both sides. I've not even burnt this one in yet, it's just come through. Um, really looking forward to taking it out and trying it. Um, I expect it to perform exactly the same as the T1, um, except you've got this, uh, this nice woodland view on the side. The Pomolis do come with these racks, they have legs as well, so you can put wood on there, you can put your pans on there before you cook over, um, and they all come with their own spark arresters, their own designs, which slot over the end. They have these holes on to guide them out. Generally, if you support it about halfway up anyway, you're going to be fine, but you know, if you're somewhere windy, uh, they're very lightweight chimneys, so it's very handy. The Fast fold by Winnerwell. They also have available the fast fold oven and other accessories as well, so you've got some versatility there. None of these have your port that you could open on the top, but yeah, they can all be used as fire pits with grills on top. These fold a little flatter because this comes off on these. Um, on the Winnerwell one, that is set in. None of these have grates in them. Um, you can do, like I said, ladder up your wood so you can get more air through. Um, or you could make a grate if you really wanted to, but kind of the point is to keep it lightweight. The size of these is similar to your bigger stoves. And yeah, they, they all come with their own bags and everything. You've, you've seen me unpack them. Got their vents. And they all perform well. One last thing to mention with these is, as you probably saw, they all fold down with the legs, which is handy. Same on the winner well there. And the last thing to note is um, if I take the top off here, another reason the mollies are a little heavier is because they have this reinforcement on the top and on the bottom you would have just seen. Because um, that's where the fire is hitting the most, the heat is really hitting it, um, and that stops kind of that warpage. You may have noticed the top of this one has warped a little bit, um, but you know, everything warps a bit. Uh, it's quite easy because you're either screwing them like with the other ones or tabbing them down. It doesn't really matter. Anything that gets hot and is metal, it's going to have a little warpage. Maybe not them big ones. Last up, I guess we'll call it um, super lightweight. We've got this, um, this one I bought from AliExpress, which doesn't have a brand. I think you can buy it under different brands and names. And you've got the Seek Outside Cub. This is loaned to me from Simon. Simon a bloke in the woods. A lot of you will know his channel. Those who don't, check it out. Very similar to mine. And as you can see, this one is absolutely tiny. He's used it in his One Tigress um, smoky hut tent. And he said it, it warmed it up lovely. This one's a bit bigger. It's a hair smaller than the Pomoli and the Winnerwell fast fold ones. Now the big disadvantage to these is you have to slot them together rather than just fold them out. Now the more they warp, the kind of more tricky that gets. It's never going to be too bad, but if it's cold, you've got gloves on, stuff like that, it's something to bear in mind. But on the plus, they're very, very light. The one from AliExpress here is 1.7 kilograms. And the cub here, I think this is about 600 grams plus the chimney. I think it's a hair under a kilogram altogether. Like I said before, I'll put all the weights up on the screen if I do get them wrong. So both of these are a bit smaller and a lot more lightweight, fiddlier to put together and they will warp more. Um, you saw me struggle a little bit with this one when I was putting it together. This is going to warp less because it is smaller. Um, I think I've put the feet on the top and the, <laughs> the uh, wing nuts on the bottom here. Doesn't really matter. That's another thing that's a bit fiddly about them is you do have to put your threaded rod through so they go into the chamber and um, they are your legs. They're a little spindly, they can sink into mud, but they do have these kind of feet. You can see this one's kind of poked through a bit. Now remarkably, even though <laughs> it is as light as it is, you've still got some heatproof glass on the, um, the AliExpress one. This one, used a couple of times, um, performed pretty well. I mean, no complaints really, except for the fiddliness and kind of the warping, I guess. 
both of these again go completely flat because these come off. And the cup here you can completely open this kind of window on the front as well as the vent on the bottom. So I guess you can see that fire as well. If you've got a good enough draw going you could just have that open. You're going to get through fuel quicker but you're going to be able to see that fire. Now most of these stoves do heat up quite a large area. Um, I use the big heavyweight ones in a four metre bell tent, but I think even the smaller ones would do a good job. Maybe not so much the cub. <laughs> For the smaller kind of one tigris and pomoli tents and that, um, all of these would heat them just fine. You'd have no problems whatsoever. Uh, the bigger your chamber, the easier it is to manage that fire or keep that heat in there and just kind of add to it here and there because you wake up in the night and maybe you'll add to it. Most people don't really run them overnight though. So yeah, if you're looking for something very lightweight to actually properly backpack with, uh, with a lightweight kind of one tiger style tent, both of these are great. They have now redesigned this cub. Instead of having the slot together sheet metal, you've now got, I think they call it a cub U. I'll put a picture of it up. It's just um, a bent piece of uh, sheet titanium, I believe, maybe two, that just bends around the back so it's curved on the back slots in the front. Uh, looks like it could be a bit easier, um, I don't know, I've not used it, but it also reduces the weight even more, which is just ridiculous. This thing you barely notice you've got it in your pack. I've used this, worked just fine. This I've not used, but I know that Simon is very happy with it. They also do a few different sizes as well, as do Pomoli. They've got a, a smaller one, I think it's a little bigger than this, but um, if I ever do get that, I'll uh, show you it. Of the three categories I've kind of gone over here out of the stoves that I've got, um, out of the heavyweight ones, I love the Winner Well. It's pretty much the same weight as the Outbacker or Frontier stove, except you've got the glass there and so many more conveniences. Plus the accessories really do make it, especially in a big sort of bell tent or um, hut sort of setup. For the kind of mid to lightweight uh, folding stoves, um, it's got to be the Pomoli with the um, with the glass panels, the T1. Um, I'm sure the Woodview one is also just as good, but you know I've not used it as yet. This one I've used a few times now, and I absolutely love it. Being able to see that fire um, and have saying, you know, it could fit in your pack, um, but I tend to carry it separately because it's only a small lightweight bag anyway. It's, it's fantastic. And I can't really go for the Cub because I've never used it. So, you know, for the price, I think it's usually about a couple of hundred pounds just over, a titanium tent stove you can use as a fire pit and has the glass. It may be fiddly, it may warp a bit, but you know, that's your entry level into kind of super lightweight um, tent stoves. Excluding the cub, because it is so tiny, it's obviously the smallest one. I don't know if that come with a bag or not. I'd have to ask Simon. Got the AliExpress at the front here. You've then got the Winner Well, the um, Pomoli, uh, the Frontier or Outbacker and the uh, big Woodlander double view at the back there. Um, nice bag with kind of big pockets as well. So there's an overview of the tent stoves I currently have. Uh, I hope that kind of comparison has helped you a little bit, seeing the sizes against each other, uh, seeing the kind of pros and cons about them. Um, and I will put all the links below, um, price details, I'll put uh, any kind of um, weight and size dimensions on the screen and everything. I can't remember all of that out here. <laughs> um, but yeah, hopefully you found that helpful. What I'll probably try and do, you know, time permitting, is do a video on every single one individually, uh, just to get a clear idea of all of them. I mean, this is the review channel after all. Um, check back to some of my older videos on the main Kent Survival channel. You'll see me using, you know, all of these in a video or another. Um, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Got any questions, put them below and I'll answer if I can. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Goodbye.